You're listening to the Hope Shot Recovery Podcast. What's up? What's up? Welcome back to the Hope Shot Live Sunday Night Live. Man, it feels so good to be here with y'all. Uh, we got a good topic for tonight, man. We got Roy and Haley in the house, which I'm super pumped to hear their uh, experience, strength, and hope on these topics as well. Um, man, you want to talk about, you know, we're coming up on our two years since we started this, man. And and, and tonight's tonight's topic, we're going to be talking about, uh, we're going to be talking about growth. Um, but it's been almost two years since we started this thing. And uh, I, I was just looking back and I was like, man, when did we start this? Because when we started, we got on YouTube. And uh, I was editing all the videos, and bro, I'll tell you right now, that stuff had me. I was like the worst anxiety, but, but the worst anxiety. But it was, um, man, the growth that we've had through this whole thing, learning new things, um, uh, what works, what doesn't. I mean, that's all a part of what life is and recovery and everything that has to do with with uh, growing up, you know. Um, so, like, I look back and I'm like, man, we we. We've come a long way, man, <laughs> since then, you know, um, and it's pretty cool. But if you guys are just jumping on, say what's up. Let us know you're here. Caesar, will you please read the clarity statement? I'd be honored. Thank you. The Hope Shot clarity statement. We here at the Hope Shot are a group of people in recovery, spreading inspiration. We come from all different walks of life and pathways of recovery. Our verbiage may be different at times, but we all have one thing in common. Recovery is a lifestyle. We support all pathways of recovery. It doesn't matter how you get from A to Z, just get there. And thank you for being a part of our Hope Shop family. You know, I don't know if this is true or not, but I think Tiffany just didn't want to hear that clarity statement or something, man. She was like, I'm out of here. Oh, <clears throat> so tonight's topic. Um, so tonight's topic is about growth. You know, I, I was talking to somebody the other day um, and they was they was talking about you know their time that they've had um that they've had clean and sober and um they uh they they put the word only you know and it's it's weird how language can change things up for us man and it's mostly an internal battle that i feel like anytime i put um words together that like discredit my growth or my um my recovery journey or anything to do with anything i do it loses power, right? It like dims the light. It, 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 it shut you, you do not taking your power back. Right. And this whole thing, we we're powerless when we came into this thing. And now it's time to take our power back. That is the whole thing. We need to get re just recharged. Right. And, um, I've been, I've beaten, beaten myself up my whole life. And I've discredited everything I do. I'm not good at this, or I'm not that, or I'm not this good looking, or I don't walk like, talk like, or whatever. And I've done that my whole life where I will literally pick up my own bat and beat the shit out of myself and like put myself down. And it's just not healthy in this, in this game right here, you know, especially it's life or death. We keep doing it over and over. It's that negative self-talk. It's changing the language of how we how we talk to ourselves how do we express our our truth to other people as well are we putting once we put only it's like i only have seven months i only have 60 days i only have one day one day is is a miracle and we all live in the just for the day factor like we all just have 24 hour period and changing that only just take that out and i hear it a lot from people and it like i'm like stop saying that don't say only just get it out of there get that word out of here because i it really just even though you don't see it it's a um it's the, a defeating thing to that self that self confidence that we need to build um so that that is something that I work on too because I do it all the time as well. Like not just just with everything I do. Like it's not good enough. Nothing is good enough. Enough. I'll, I'll never amount to anything. And that's been that whole talk my whole life because of past uh, situations and how I was brought up and how I was raised. And it just needs to like we need to stop doing that to ourselves because we're here to get our power back. And how do we do that? It starts with this right here, with this, with this, you know, making sure that I am well and 
it starts with how I talk to myself inside my head and outside of my mouth. Um, so I, I think that's such an important topic, um, you know, in, in this, re in this uh, recovery journey, uh, because we don't want to stun our growth. We want to make sure that we're um, doing everything we can in our power to make sure that we are um, building that strength, building that hope, building that courage, building that everything that we always um, depleted ourselves of. And I think that's, um, needs to be talked about more, you know? <clears throat> so uh, I'm going to pass it over to uh, Roy. Let me say what's up real quick. I'm going to say what's up to a couple people. And if you guys haven't shared this yet, please share this live feed. You never know who might need to hear this tonight. Um, it just takes you, the sharer, to get it out there um, to that person. Okay. Roy. All right. How hey. you guys doing? All right. Um, yeah, I love the topic. So I was hearing growth. I was also hearing like self-love, you know, um, which is a big, big part of recovery and just uh, being happy with yourself and being happy in life. Um, I always, you know, the other one that irks me, it's not the word only, but it's like I was saying before, it's it's substantial. So someone's like, oh, they have substantial clean time, you know, and uh, we always talk about it. It's about the work I'm doing today, not the time I have. Right. The time gives us experience. Um, but man. I was that addict who could not get an hour clean, who spent my life in bathrooms and hiding it, hiding in a dark room and socializing with nobody. Um, and everything I did was geared towards getting the next one, you know, and, and I remember not be not believing that I could get a day clean. Um, I remember sitting with my probation officer crying, telling her, I can't do it. This is not something I can do on my own. And I remember the pride I had in my first day. And I remember going to meetings and seeing people with a lot of clean time. Um, and I did diminish my, my achievements, right? That's what we're talking about. Like, like diminishing what we've achieved just by having the courage and the strength to walk through the door and say we need help and start working towards a different life. And uh, I'm guilty of that. I still do it to this day. You know, I say I only have five years. You know, someone says your head pops out of your ass and I'm like, I don't see it. And, uh, and I need to do better at that for myself sometimes. Um, and, and I work on it every day. Um, just be just accepting where I'm at today and uh, remembering what it took to get here. You know, I just spent uh, the last this weekend on a spiritual retreat and I thought about where I was last year and with the holidays where I was at. A year ago, two years ago, my last holiday using, I've done a lot of that reflecting and uh, and working through some of that stuff. And like, I can truly say, like, maybe for the first time in my recovery that over this this last several months that I've really began to be proud of where I've where I've gotten to. And, and you know, that's our job as, as other people in recovery to make sure that people don't diminish their achievements and they realize they, they, they don't forget like how hard it is and how okay it is to be where they are at today. You know, like uh, somebody else was speaking about that this weekend. Like, you know, remember when you're looking at somebody and, and you see them with five years and you diminish where you're at thinking you should be somewhere else that like, we didn't just jump into where we're at today. We had, you know, we, we had to work for that. We had to be patient. We had to go through a lot of ups and downs and, you know, There'll be more to come without a doubt. Like life throws that at us, but like it's okay to be somebody with six days and know what you should know with six days clean and be proud of six days clean, you know, or 60 days clean or 30 days clean. Like that's why we say just for today, because there, there's no big eyes and little U's, right? Uh, and I have watched with my own eyes somebody with two days cleans keep somebody with a year clean from using. I've seen it happen. You know, and, and the newcomer doesn't realize how valuable they are. And that like sometimes when we're going through it and we take a newcomer out for some coffee or some dinner or do something for them that we're going through it. And that takes our mind off of what we're going through and, and reminds us where we come from and how valuable they are. And without them, like dude, there's been times where, where without them, I wouldn't got I've gotten that day clean. And, and, and it's our job to remind them just how valuable they are and how important they are and how important their achievement is, because I mean. You don't get five years without 60 days. You know, that's why that 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 white chip, that white key tag is so important. Um, so absolutely. And, and, and growth. I mean, we could talk about that all night, you know, 
Um, I'm grateful that where I'm at uh, for where I'm at in my growth and I, and, and uh, the spiritual place that I'm at. You know, um, the first two years were just learning how to behave like a normal member of society, and I didn't do a good job as as you, Justin, are, <laughs> are aware of, and many people in my circle. You know, and I'm not. I don't hide it, or nor am I ashamed of it today. You know, um, the next couple of years were like implementing. You know. Uh, being a productive member of society and, and, and like uh, working on bad behaviors. And this last year has just become becoming uh, finding spirituality within the program because it's a spiritual program, as we were talking about before. And uh, growth never ends. The minute the minute that my growth ends, everything negative about me comes back because all of it, all of it's all of it's only stays put with with work and uh, and. Uh, Every day and every minute, I strive to be the best that I can be. I no longer, I no longer try to be spiritual. I try to live spiritual, and that has changed everything about my recovery and my life today, and my relationships. Um, that's the greatest difference I have, you know, in growth, and and that all comes with time. That sixty days, man. Without that sixty days, the rest of it doesn't happen. So that guy who says he's only got sixty days, man, that sixty days is laying the groundwork for the rest of his life, as will every other day from there on out, you know. And uh, every bit of it's important. So that's what I got. You know, I, I loved how you touched on that, man. That's like the, the person with one day or two days can keep the person with one. And you've seen it. You've witnessed it. And I'll tell you right now, the person like Russell, he just right here. Each and every one of you have helped keep me clean coming up on 22 months. And I thank you from the bottom of my heart for recovery. And I'll tell you right now, that dude has kept me clean. Okay. Him, Rachel, all the people. That's how we do this, man. I, I just, I don't, I don't know. I'm not some guru. <laughs> yeah, trust me. Um, I'm just another freaking person, like the person that just came in. I'm exactly the same, maybe even worse, because I know a couple things. You know what I mean? So I love how you touched on that because that's important. Here we go. You think you know a couple of things. <laughs> <laughs> I know at least two. <laughs> We think we know something. <laughs> exactly. But that can get us in trouble, right? You know what I mean? Like, do you mind if I jump in? Like, you mind if I jump in? Yeah. Yeah. Did you jump in? Did you? He, got, uh, he got me thinking. And, um, you know, before we came on, we were talking about going back to basics. And, and we were talking about, but you never, well, at least... I've, I've never really left the basics, you know, my, my growth is in other areas of my life. The basics are the basics. The building blocks are my foundation that I build off of. So those basics are the bedrock of everything that I'm building after that. And as far as growth goes, that's the beauty of a fellowship or having a support network is none of us, none of us see it in the beginning. We're always comparing to somebody else. It's um, 30 days, five days. We don't see any growth, but other people see it in us. And that's the beauty of the people around you when they say, man, you're doing great. I'm proud of you. Those words are so impactful when you're brand new because you haven't had anything to be proud of. Let me not say you. I haven't had anything to be proud of when I'm, you know, four days in recovery. And then some guy goes, man, I'm proud of you. You're doing a good job, man. Keep coming back. And you're like, what? Me? Me? I'm doing a good job. And it feels good. And it makes you want to come back. And that's our job. Everybody on this screen today, it's our job to encourage those people that can't see the growth. And exactly like Justin said, when somebody said, I only have seven months, it's our job to go, don't be putting only in front of that. That's a big deal. And I'm proud of you. And then they feel good. How do you get good self-esteem? By doing esteemable acts. But you got to let them know that that's what they're doing. You know, it's um, it's important that we encourage people. It was important to me. It made all the difference in the world because when I was, when I got out of rehab, I remember walking to all these meetings and stuff. And... Um, I thought it was such a huge deal. I had the um, the code to get into the Edna Avenue Club, and I was it was like they had trusted me with 
the biggest thing in the world. I was like, I took it dead serious because nobody had put any trust in me in years. And those guys that said, just come in and make some coffee, just set it up, put the literature out. That little bit of trust they put in me made me feel like I was doing the right thing. And on that walk, every single day, I was so focused on, I don't want to let anybody down. I don't want to be late. These guys put their trust in me. One day I realized I'd been walking down this road for 30 days. My, you know, I had to walk to probation. I had to walk to my meetings. I didn't have a license. And I realized I was walking by three bars every single day. And I hadn't even noticed because I was focused on this goal, this this growth, this spiritual growth. You know, I like you, Roy, you know, I, I had crashed and burned so many times. I really didn't have a lot of confidence in myself. You know, I, I wasn't like, oh, man, I'm going to go out there and I'm going to do this recovery thing and I'm going to do great. I was more like, shit, I mean, I'm, I'm going to give it a try. I don't have a lot of faith that this is going to work. Nothing else has. But those people early on that told me I was doing a good job, those people that asked me to speak when I had nothing to say, you know, like when they when you got like 30 days or whatever, and they're like, hey, man, can you get up in this meeting and speak? I was, Why the hell would you want to hear what I got to say? I ain't got nothing to say. But I did. And they made me understand that, you know, um, they're like, you got 30 days. So anybody that's got less 30 days, you can tell them something about how you did it. If you got one day and you're coming back to the next day, you can tell the guy that's walking into his first meeting how you were here yesterday. You know, we all have something to offer in this thing. And as we get farther along, I believe that that's part of the growth process for us to be able to recognize it in others like it was done for us. So that next group can go and feel better about themselves and, and just I, I gotta be told i'm doing the right thing i gotta be told i'm i'm doing a good job at something because like justin said between my ears i'm hard on myself you know i'm i'm always a piece of crap um i'm never doing enough so the beauty of this thing is since it was done for me i want to do it for other people and i gas people up when I see him, I'm like, man, you look so good, bro. Look at you. You know, and like, I just, I want to put a smile on people's face. When people see me, I want them to smile before I even talk because they know it's coming. I'm going to gas them up. And that is a bright spot in my life. You know, if you can bring a smile to somebody's face, if you can make them forget their problems, even for 60 seconds, just while you're talking to them. That's a blessing, man. And I'm doing my job today. That's really all I got. Yeah, I, I want to say that real quick, um, Caesar, because it's like gassing people up, right? See, and that's another thing with that discrediting, right? Accepting compliments as they are, right? Don't deflect. Don't. Oh man, I was got me. <laughs> you know, because I like having your butt for the better part of two years telling you you were sexy, and then I finally <laughs> accepted it. You know what I mean? <laughs> But it, it, it's those things. It's those things that like it might seem so like minuscule to us. I'm like, ah, blah, blah, blah. but really, it some deep, deep shit we're freaking deflecting, and we need to stop it because that is how we're gonna take our power back. Get that how power back. Accept compliments. Really, you know what I mean? Like, and we struggle with it. No, man. No, no I can do better. Nah. <laughs> Justin, man, you're working out really hard. I'm proud of you. You look good. Well, I mean, yeah. you know, I'm I'm getting there. I hate it, you're it. doing a good job, man. You got up and you did your thing today. You know, it, it's just it, it's it's important mm -hmm. that we remember how it felt when we got those compliments and when we were told we were doing the right thing for us to do that for people now. Yep. Because if you can put a smile on somebody's face, maybe that's what makes them want to come back the next day. Because, man, Roy told me I was doing a good job, man. I don't want to let Roy down. You know, you might not think about it, Roy, for the rest of the day, just that compliment you gave. But they might dwell on that for the rest of the day. And they might show back up the next day just because Roy told them they're doing a good job, man. And that, that you love them and you're proud of them and that kind of stuff, man. Like we can change people's perspectives on themselves. If we share our perspective with them, that we're proud of them, that 
10 days is amazing. Two days is amazing. Stop putting that. It's only in front of it. You know, be proud that you did it today. Don't be ego. Don't be cocky. But be proud of yourself. You know, every once in a while, give yourself a damn break. And cheeseburger. Yeah. Hey, I, <laughs> I did. Hey, I will say that Roy is really good at gassing people up, man. In the beginning, dude. He's he. Listen, I hear it all the time, man. And like people always like they'll give him little little praises. You know, if it wasn't for Roy, man, I probably wouldn't be here. And like he does gas people up in a good way, so he does do that. Um, let's see. I'm gonna say what's up to some people, and then I'm gonna pass it over to Haley and let her speak, and then we'll save the best for last. You know that. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> don't flip, don't deflect, Tiffany. You better stop that. Mm -mm. Um, so let's see, we got James Frank. Man, yeah, it's been a minute. Good to see you. Hey, what up, y'all? Been busy. Glad to be back on here. Glad to be all doing well. Good. Hope you're doing well too, my friend. Um, let's see, we got Teresa. She's when did this start? It started at eight o'clock every Sunday night Eastern time. We got Sandra. Uh, Cornwell, she says, well said, it's important to write a different script for yourself. The world does this too well and and will beat the crap out of you with their words and their opinions of who they perceive you to be. And we're the biggest ones that do that too, beat the crap out of ourselves. Um, let's see, we got, uh, Jenna, uh, good to see you. Let's see, we got... Bobby, shout out to Bobby with 10 months right here. Congratulations. That's hey, amazing. congratulations, Bobby. Thank you for sharing that with us. Um, let's see, who else we got? We got Nathan in the comments, my friend. We miss you too, buddy. Can't wait for you to be back on, back here. And then we got Bobby says, don't see this type of content on Facebook. Usually I love this. Thanks. Thank you, guys. We're here every Sunday, and I know Kelly put it in there saying that. Um, and then we have Nathan says Caesar is always putting a smile on his face. That's right. Um, we got Nathan also says I cannot take a compliment without being awkward as fuck, and that's true. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> oh, <laughs> let's see, Russell, you're an inspiration, brother. Um, we got Shannon says, weird, I just heard of you guys on Thursday when you showed up in my news feed, was told amazing things about you guys. Well, that's great to hear <laughs> that, that we, there's amazing things here said about us, you know, because we're just trying to do, you know, the best we can and just spread hope and inspiration. That's what we're here for. That's what we do every Sunday. Um, thank you to everyone that comes on here with us, man. Like it's, it's such a awesome, awesome thing we're doing here. Um, thank you for being in the comments and thank you for sharing that. We got Jess says, it's been a hot minute since I've logged on on Sunday Night Live. Um, life, good to be back. Good to see you here too. Thanks for tuning in. Let's see. We got Alicia says, good to see y'all. We missed the last few lives. Good to see you too. Thank you for being here. Rachel says, Roy Lauren has been a huge part of my recovery and always shows up for me. So freaking proud of you, brother. Grateful to witness the growth in you this past year. And I love you beyond words. There's another one right there. She gasses some people up too. <laughs> Rachel's out there just spreading the love. Yes, dude. It's, 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 I'm telling you, man, it's a we thing, man. We all, because at times, man, I don't feel like, I don't even feel like gassing people up or even feel like I need to be gassed up i don't want to be gassed up you know but um <laughs> you say too bad. We don't do it anyway <laughs> eh, you know it's good man we need that so haley what's up haley hey hey uh hi all i'm haley <laughs> uh, i'm grateful to be here and be able to share a message of hope i really like the topic um you know, and I think about the growth process first i like to point out like what caesar had said about um kind of uh, flipping it as far as instead of um, like being so hard on ourselves or holding ourselves back more so like what we can do as people who have been here to kind of help deflect that, you know, or, or where they don't deflect that, you know, and then, um, you know, I think about my growth and I think about where I was whenever I, I came into a 12 step program, you know, I think about, you know, where my disease, my addiction had brought me, you know, like, just like he had shared, I was in the dark hole, you know, like doing things that um, 
I'm not proud of, you know, stuff that I've had to do a lot of work on where you say, you know, you have to do, how do you build self-esteem? You do esteemable things. Well, it's, it's backwards whenever I'm doing, if I'm doing those things that are dirty, I feel dirty. It's hard for me to think good about myself or <clears throat> be positive or, you know, look at the positive or be grateful when I'm just filled of all that nasty stuff, you know? So it's kind of like you touched on a foundation, both of you did, you know? And so like, where do I get growth? Well, I mean, I've got growth, first of all, since I come in just from not, you know, putting a substance in me, whether that be a specific drug or alcohol or whatever, you know? And so that right there helps me grow up in general, you know? And then I get around people who kind of have the same, um, you know, ideas me or the winners, as you would call them, you know, and those people are the ones who teach me how to grow, you know, or help me get to a place where I can grow up. And, um, you know, I think about you, you are saying like deflecting as far as, oh, I only got six months or I only got this. Well, it kind of puts me like where I am in, in the point in my life right now. Cause I've been there, you know, like, can't wait till I can raise my hand, you know, cause I got a year and all this, you know, or like thinking I'm not good enough. And then, you know, um, living with a, with a relative cause that, you know, I'm not, um, grown up enough to live on my own and I'm seeing all these people with all this stuff. And then, you know, I get to this place where now I got my own, my own house, but like I rent. Right. So, I, well, now I'm not good enough cause I don't own a house. I, I rent a house, but it's like, you know, my growth, like I got to look at my growth. Sometimes I, I think about, you know, instead of seeing what I have, I think about what I don't have, you know, and I think that's just like, you know, a natural thing that happens for someone like me, where I go to that negative, like I heard someone share today that when a negative thought comes up, it's my addiction talking to me, it's my disease talking to me. And like, how do I change that? You know, I change that with the action of gratitude, you know, or or um, giving back to somebody else, you know, and, and that makes me think, you know, you mentioned Rachel in here, like, that's someone who can definitely blow my head up, you know, when I'm done having a conversation with her, I'm feeling like I'm walking on water, you know, I love that woman and in this area in general, you know, and like, um, like I mentioned before, you know, the growth is the people I surround myself around, you know, and like, it's, it's looked different over time, you know, like for me, just getting one day clean was growth, you know, like he shared it. I couldn't, I couldn't put to get, put together one hour, you know, and then, then I had five days and, you know, like for me in specific, other people do it, but I had to be separated from my addiction. I needed some space, you know, like my consequences were separation from the outside, you know, and, and, um, I'm grateful for that, but it didn't take, it wasn't on the first try, you know, it, it, it was, you know, like it was a process, you know, where I learned some stuff each time. And then I got to a point where I just became willing, you know, the pain got great enough and I became willing to do something different. And, um, you know, and, and through that, it's been a journey and a process. And, you know, I think about, you know, where I am as far as growth and like how far I come. And then I think about like, you know, my kids and I think about like who I, who I am as a parent, like from when I first walked in the door, like I didn't know how to be a parent, you know, I didn't know how to be a mother. I didn't know my parents gave me the best that they could give me, you know, and like with what they had. And, and, you know, that's something that I feel not a lot. Of, I mean, you know, you hear it, you hear it shared, you know, it's like, um, breaking the chains, you know? And so for me, like, that's a big part of my growth is like, you know, getting outside of my comfort zone and doing the things and, and being consistent, you know, like being consistent because it's easier for me just to sit back and be like, whatever, you know, you can do whatever. Cause I don't want to deal with it. But then really, you know, like, I'm robbing them in the process, you know, and myself in the long run. So, you know, I just, I stick with the winners, you know, and, um, I followed some suggestions and, um, you know, like, again, I'm kind of all over the place, but something else that popped in my head is like growth as far as like the, the, the decisions that I make, right. Like the, like when I first came in, um, you know, to a program, 
the decisions that I made then to the decisions that I make now, you know, are extravagantly different, you know, like, um, grown up, grown up decisions, you know, and, um, my life is, you know, beyond anything that I could have asked for. I would have shortchanged myself, you know, if I would have thought or made up what I thought was going to happen for me, you know, and, um, it's only through, you know, having built that foundation that Caesar was talking about, you know, like I had to start from somewhere and, you know, and, and then the fellowship and the, the sponsorship and the step work and, you know, like, the higher power and like all these things like accumulated and like, that's where, you know, the growth stepped in, you know, and um, we're talking about like newcomers and how basically a topic for a newcomer is the same thing for, you know, for, an, for an old timer, we're all, you know, we're all in the same spot, you know, like what can benefit them can also benefit us because for me, it's just the same. I got to stick to the basics, you know, and that's how I keep growing. Those are my foundations. And, you know, um, made me think about this. Uh, we were at a meeting this morning at this spiritual retreat that we went to and, you know, talking about how we can even learn from newcomers. This newcomer had said a comment that was like, so it was so powerful. Like this girl had 45 days clean. And she said, I was an unreliable narrator in my own story. And I was, you know, like we were both like, wow, like that was bomb, you know, and it's just, you know, it's amazing. Like we learn from each other, you know, like we understand each other, we relate, you know, and, and, um, I'm just grateful. I'm grateful to be here. I'm, I'm not really that person who hops up and shares a lot because just like somebody with 60 days, you know, I'm over here thinking like, I don't have anything to share, you know, and, and that's where I just got to step outside of that, you know, and like, just be present and give it how it is and give the raw me and, you know, this is, this is what it is. So thanks for, for asking me to come on. Thank you for coming on Haley. And, uh, you know, we need strong women and you're one of them, you know, you're very strong in your recovery and like, you're just, uh, you know, I, I, I hear nothing ever, ever bad. And just like how awesome, like of a, person woman in recovery you are that's why i was like man it'd be, it's nice when you suit up you show up and you share some hope you know and um god i had something on my on my brain and i was gonna i was gonna oh roy remember you were talking about the person with 17 years right remember we were just talking mm -hmm. about you're yeah. talking about the person with 17 years they're hold to, held to almost a higher standard mm -hmm. uh than the person that's in the new recovery but we're all in this together and we all at, at different times like we all have just for today you know and like sometimes the person of 17 years might be struggling harder than the person with two days three days you know uh and, and it's so true and like they're held to this higher standard and you're not supposed to struggle what Get the hell out of here <laughs> you know what i mean you know so i hold myself to that standard too often i'm like i think because i've got the time that i do i shouldn't be where i'm at all the time. That's where I start getting the negative self speak. And I just wanted to add from what Caesar was saying and she was saying, and that is if you don't, if your circle, if you get around your circle and they don't make you feel good about you and what you're doing. Now, listen, like accountability is one thing, you know, being held accountable sucks sometimes, but like on a general basis, if the people you surround yourself with, like we're talking about Russell, we're talking about Rachel. Uh, there's so many other people who I could throw names out that are part of my circle. Today, I am surrounded by people who love me and want to lift me up. We were in a prayer circle the other day, and they were talking about uh, um, the people we've lost, right? And, and I was like, and let's remember the ones that hold us up today, too, right? Mm -hmm. Like, like there are so many people like, like who you surround yourself with may be the most important decision you make in recovery, period. Because, like, you talk about the steps, right? We need someone. We need someone in the fellowship to take us through them, right? We need suggestions, right? We count on those in our circle is who we go to for those suggestions. When you talk about spirituality, you're talking about surrounding yourself with spiritual people. When you're talking about growth, if you're surrounding yourself with people who aren't growing, you're not going to grow either. You know what I mean? And, and like surrounding yourself with the right people. And if you don't, if you, if you surround yourself with people and they don't make you feel good about the positive things you're doing, it's time to look at that because you're never going to go anywhere and you're never going to find that true, you know, 
part of self-love is finding those who love you for yourself, mm -hmm. for you, you know? Yep. Yeah. Well, speaking of blowing people's heads up, you know what I'm saying, and gassing people up, I just wanted to let you know, Justin, that you got like one of the best podcast radio voices I ever heard. <laughs> like, there it is. Yeah. There it is. There it is. <laughs> Yeah, I, it took, it took two years to get that good on here, bro. Like, it's no joke. <laughs> and that's, all right, I'm going to accept that. I'm going to bring it in. <laughs> I'm going to put it in here. <laughs> Yo, I hate the sound of my own voice sometimes, and I ain't going to lie. You know what I mean? Like, I'm like, hey, I'm stupid. I don't even know why I'm doing this. Listen, we I do it all the time. <laughs> I've gotten better. I'll tell you that. Yes. Um, You're great. You're good at it. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so I'm going to read a few comments. Um, I also want to say, um, Tam, that this is a journey, not a destination, and trust the process and enjoy the process and go with the process. And I want to say also that sometimes we outgrow people too. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> um, so I'm going to read some comments and I'm going to pass it over to Tiffany. And then uh, we can kind of talk after that. So um, let's see. We got uh, Rachel says, Haley. Now, this woman is an absolute diamond, a pre precious, priceless gem who blesses us all with an abundance of strength, love, grace, and compassion. Gaslight. Um, <laughs> actually, there is no gaslight on that one. Haley, Haley uh, thank you for leading by example and for the light in, our, in my life. Soul sisters always. Oh, gosh. Man, you have a way with words, Rachel. I will tell you this now. You have a way with words. And I got to put myself back up here just because um, nobody can see my face <laughs> or my lips moving sometimes. Um, let's see. We got um, – I, I had to come up here. We got Steve. Big Steve, man. I didn't even know you had a Facebook, bro. You know? Yeah, he's <laughs> like, on YouTube. I know, bro. <laughs> There's some things we just don't know about people, man. All of a sudden, just comes out and like, I, I got a Facebook. Oh, and he's got know, a picture bro. and everything. <laughs> I know. Like, I, I feel like I'm, I'm gonna go find you and be a friend. I'm gonna friend you. If I don't get a friend in return, man, that's it. We done. Hey, uh, Steve, we love you too, and there's nothing you can do about that. Not a lick. Not a lick. Oh, <laughs> uh, let's see. We have um Crystal. She is um. Congratulations for getting on the on your journey to recovery, and uh, you know the, the Suboxone mat is important too. So uh, don't discredit yourself. Yeah, well, she asked what we thought about it, and it's right in our clarity statement. We support all pathways of recovery. If you're bettering your life and you're working towards that goal, and your life is getting better, we are proud of you. And you know, keep going, keep doing. Keep doing a damn deal. Uh, we got Jamie. Hey, good to see you here. Um, she says, Rachel Keegan and Haley, you guys are an inspiration to me every day. And I am blessed to call you friends and have you in my circle. Thank you for sharing your words and spirit with all of us. Thank you for being here. And we're going to get you on here. She wants to come on here and share her story, too. We're just kicking it off this year. Um, let's see. We got. Um. Lots of stuff. Da, da, da. Let's see what we got. Um, we got Jessica says, uh, um, I know, right, but uh, good to see you here. Just want to give you a shout out. <clears throat> we got Naomi. She says, LOL, but want to give you a shout out. Good to see you here. Uh, let's see. We got Steve. He says, so right. And uh, good to see you here, buddy. Um, thank you for supporting us. If you guys haven't yet, please share this live feed. You never know who might need to hit that replay and get some hope. So um, I'm going to pass it over to my lovely wife, Tiffany. Hey, guys. Good evening. Uh, um, it's kind of funny. This is a really cool topic because and I missed the first couple minutes. I do apologize. Um, Regardless, so I think it's really cool to talk about this because over the last um, few months, I've kind of like wanted to, there's people who've been celebrating, right, um, with some time. And I remember when they, when I first started seeing them and, uh, and I remember like, I just wanted to go hug them. 
but then I'm like, oh, you know, I don't know. I'm weird with hugs because I, I like to give them. I really love giving hugs, but at the same time, I know like people don't like hugs. <laughs> so, um, especially at first, right? Anyways, and so like, like you guys were talking about, like when, when somebody is brand new, it like, lights this refire it like relights the fire in my soul right because not only does it like ugh, you guys already said all the good stuff like it's all just so true and it's just all the like the basics and the what I came in day one as I'm still doing the same and learning the same and coming back to the same stuff with a little bit of time I, I still learn the same and when day one people walk in and then I start to see them consistently and it's just so intriguing. And then when they choose to like talk and it's just so exciting. Well, I mean, depending on what they're sharing, but you know what I mean? Like, because it relights that fire in my soul of, man, I remember when I first started coming around. Now, when I first started coming around, I was a little, it, it was an interesting story. I mean, I'm sure everybody says, right. But like, and I remember there was two people specifically that really made me want to come back. And to be honest, I wanted nothing to do with any of it. And so like, but the only reason I kept showing up and being okay with coming around was because two people and what did these two people do? They gave me a hug and they said, I just love your face so much. I love seeing your face. That That's all it took to make me feel like, even though I felt like an outsider, I didn't belong. I don't know what's going on. I, I, I felt out of place. I didn't have any idea of nothing, but I knew that for some reason this person was making me feel a type of way that nobody else was making me feel. And that was a genuine, somebody was saying something genuine, even though I didn't quite believe her, like as far as like, I would love to see my face. But when she was saying it, it was so real and genuine. And to this day, I know that it was right. But like, it made me co keep coming back. And so like, when I see a new face I want to do the same because it's like those if you just like keep coming and then when they choose to share and it's like you said Haley like they say things because like that different perspective from that new eyes their new eyes and in, in the and then it helps our a little tiny bit seasoned eyes re-see it and it's like a whole nother two different three different lights all over it and it's like ah a whole new world but all in the same and um It's like, I remember that fear, right? It's crazy, okay? So today, this morning, I went to a meeting as well, and it was with a different, um, I went to church, okay? And um, I was scared, and I was nervous, and I was sweating, and I felt so out of place, and I felt alone, and I felt um, all those feelings, right? And it brought me, that's literally what it brought me back to was, man, I need to just be consistent and coming so that I don't have to feel this way anymore. You know? Um, and it brought me back. To, it's so funny. We're talking about it tonight, right? Because it's like when you first start, it's all that newness and that fear and the anxiety and you don't know anybody and the, uh, and I just love, I want to get better at this year. You know, when I see a new face being okay with going up to talk to them, right? Um, <laughs> oh my God, I, I really got to I want to, when I first met Justin, it was on the phone and that I really liked his voice too. Just saying, <laughs> um, screwed up because I don't, <laughs> but, um, I wanted to make, I want to make it a better goal this year, like being okay with, cause I'm really awkward too. And like, I, I, have all these different thoughts of like this new face doesn't want my weird self so awkward coming up and talking to them right um but at the same time like I have this deep desire in my heart to go up to these people because they mean more to me than anybody else in the room even though so many all of us it's a wee thing right each of us we all equal and love each other the same because we all play these different roles in, in different periods of our recoveries right but like this new person coming in I just, the value of them walking in the room is so precious. And like, I just wanted this year, hopefully get outside myself enough to get past the fact that I'm really just my own thoughts of myself and just go up and give them a hug and maybe share the gift that was given to me that kept me here. Because, um, 
I mean, why we can't keep what we got without giving it away. And maybe that's why I got this desire. And hopefully this year I can show up on it. Right. Um, so I love you guys. Happy, Happy freaking, freaking Sunday. Sunday, new year and Haley and Roy. It's so freaking cool to see your faces and have you here. Thanks, babe. Hey, I will say this, like all we are is seed planters, like whether it grows or not, but how can we do that? Planting a seed is called a hug too. Planting a seed is being nice to somebody. Is saying you're glad you're here. It's putting all those little positive things out into the atmosphere that was said to us along the way as well. And that's what's important. That's what we need to give back. Can't keep what we have unless we give it away. And that's facts, you know? So that's why I show up every Sunday in my weird self talking like a podcaster, but I'm not. But <laughs> but I am, but I'm not. But I am, but I'm not. Okay. Oh, 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 sexy voice. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, listen, <laughs> it's so funny. And I'm going, listen, I'm going to believe y'all, okay? Because that's what I do. And that's what we're supposed to do. I have to believe y'all because I love and respect these people. So I'm not going to rely on my own thinking because I am. I'm just terrible at thinking for myself, but, <laughs> but it's like, that's what I, that's how I believe there's a higher power. That's how I believe there's certain things. That's how I believe that you guys are telling me the truth is because I, I've, I've equipped myself with all these things to help me trust. Right. And that's what I do now is like, because you say I am, I'm going to take your word for it, <laughs> you know, and believe you're not lying to me. <laughs> Took work. To do that growth hey you know everybody in here talking about your hugs are the best tiffany this and that you know it's uh all of us we're all examples in our job we're example in our circle we're example in our community and our job is to be the best example of recovery we can be each and every day, the best version of ourselves, the best example of recovery. And I can't do that if I don't give the hug. And I can't do that if I don't give the compliment. And I can't do that if I don't hold the door open for the person. You know, I. it's the transformation from the selfish, self-centered dude that started this thing to the way that I think now is astounding because I think about everybody else more than I think about myself. I'm like, oh man, well, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to cross the lane over there because that's a little old lady and she'll probably get nervous if I get right behind her with a big truck. And, you know, like, it's just, it's important to me to represent myself in a way that makes recovery look attractive. So that somebody doesn't go, well, look at that miserable bastard. Why would I want to be in recovery? Look at him. You know, that doesn't look like anything that I want. I don't want to represent that. I want to represent the fact that recovery is fun and we have an amazing time. We build true bonds, true friendships, and we're caring, loving people. And if I can wear that every day, then I did my job every day. Mm -hmm. yeah. Go ahead, Roy. You know, you're talking about growth and that's, that's where you truly start to see and feel the growth beyond people telling you that is when you stop trying to be and just are. You know, mm -hmm. It's no longer something I try to be. And that's and that's new. I'm going to be completely honest. And you guys who know me know that that's new is like today. I don't try to hold the door open for people. I don't try to think of others first. I don't try to say the nice thing. I used to be a guy who tried to do that because that's who I wanted to be. And that's who I aspired to be. And today, like when a negative thought comes into my mind, it doesn't even feel right. Like like saying something negatively, reacting negatively. Not, and listen, I'm not perfect, right? But nine times out of 10, it just feels wrong. And so it's not even like, it's no longer like the 10th thought before I get to a good one. It's like that one negative thought comes in. It feels, just feels wrong, feels dirty, like you were talking about. And then, and then it's on to something more positive or no reaction at all and something I need to just walk away from. But there's, and, and my sponsor used to tell me that. That was the, one of his favorite lines is, I may be the only example of recovery that somebody ever gets out in public and what example do i want to leave for them and, it, and it's taken me it's taken me this long to get to a place where i can i can truly say like i'm an example i can be proud of you know i can say it for me i don't really need people to tell me that anymore but you know what for four and a half years i needed people in my circle to tell that to me because i did not believe it today i know it it's not even a belief but but at one time that 
I needed Justin. I needed Tiffany. I needed you, Caesar. You were one of the first people that I ever met in recovery. You are the first person on my Facebook ever. My first Facebook. That was Caesar. <laughs> Damn. That's the funny circles. Everything Dude, else is garbage. No, I never had a Facebook. <laughs> and, and they told me I should get a Facebook to link to be able to link up with people in recovery. And he was the first person to send me a friend request and said, like, welcome to recovery. He knew a friend of mine that I'd known since I was like 16. Dude, that's so awesome. That is yeah. Awesome. Yeah. That's how it goes back, man. And I didn't see him for like three more years until I walked into a meeting one day and seen him was like, holy crap. <laughs> <laughs> There's that Facebook guy. There's that Facebook guy. <laughs> hey, can I read one comment real quick? Yeah, was, yes. Yeah. I, I know you, I, I see your eyes moving. I know you got plans, but just, I want to share this. <laughs> so Stevie says, the last time I commented here is when my mom first went into a nurse, into nursing home care. And I believe it was Caesar who was sharing about handling his own loss. Your experience, strength, and hope helped me to be able to be there for my mom in the last days leading up mm -hmm. to and including as she passed last month. Thank you. Wow. Thank you for sharing that, Stevie. And, and it's not to toot my own horn. It's literally this is why we do this. People put questions in the, the comments. We address the questions and we share how we get through life without picking something up. Life's hard. You know, like it, I don't want to paint this pretty picture. Yeah, we gas people up and we, you know, we we love each other and we're kind people, but we still have to face life on life's terms, not our terms. And death happens and all this all this stuff happens out there. And if we can lean on each other and share how if I can share how I got through it, maybe somebody else can get through it. And if Justin can share how he got through something, then maybe I can get through something. And it it's just us sharing our little nuggets of how we dealt with these situations and people that shared them with me that make me able to, I'm able to say, man, you know, if that guy can do it, I can probably do it too. It, it, so I, I love that comment. That was, it was, it was beautiful. And I, I'm so sorry about your loss, uh, Stevie. Um, it, it never gets easy. You know, I lost my mom as well. Um, you know, and it, it, it never gets easier, but uh, it's learning how to, to be able to process and, and, and get through it and, and grieve in the proper way in a healthy way, you know? Um, so, um, you know, thank you for sharing that with us. And, and, and again, it's like everybody in the comments, you know, you guys also help us as well. That, that right there just, just gave me so much power. Right. And, and like, and, and let us know that we're on the right path and we're doing the right things because we need affirmations and how do we get it we get it from y'all man and you guys are in the comments helping each other as well it's a it's just one group it's a group thing it's got a funky swing you know <laughs> uh, remember that song who don't remember that song huh you know it's a group thing it's kind of funky no okay whatever it's a group thing <laughs> whatever anyways <laughs> Uh, let's see what we got in here. Uh, yes, Jessica. I said, also, I said, I know, right, to for saying that. So thank you for that as well. I appreciate you. And I'm going to believe you. Um, let's see. Uh, we got Steve says, all new thing, this Facebook stuff. I am pushing buttons. I don't know. <laughs> all right, man. Good to see you on here on Facebook. And it says, Lisa says, I love you so much, Tiff. Um, let's see. Russell says because of seeds planted by Kelly, Caesar, Nathan, and so on, I am is why I'm here today, and I'm so glad you are here today, Russell. Man, you're just just that dude. You're just that dude, man. Um, let's see. And we got Christina. Oh, yeah, I read this comment, and she says, "I just said that today. I'm gonna get back to going to more meetings to share my experience, strength, and hope. My story can help someone who is struggling. I work in recovery field now, but I can't forget where I came from either. I didn't get to three years and eight months clean by myself. No, that is not that is facts right there. And um, you know, it, it's 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 our duty, it's our responsibility. And I remember, I think it was Lisa that said this, and I'm thinking I'm gonna. We are being selfish." By not sharing, by not sharing our experience, Jay felt by not raising your hand and giving that and giving that back, we're being selfish, and that is a form of um, the self-centered addiction. You know that the center of our disease, you know, is the self-centeredness. So um, definitely get back to me and share that stuff. I need to hear it. Yeah. Are you gonna? What you want to say something? 
Uh, let's see. Technical difficulties, man. <laughs> oh, Naomi, she says, I'm here because of Tiff Freedom. Hell yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, see, it's a wee thing, man. Um, and uh, Rachel says it takes an army, and that is facts. So it has been a pleasure to be with you guys tonight. And Roy and Haley, thank you so much for coming on here and sharing your experience, strength, and hope. Like, we really appreciate y'all. And um, we appreciate you. Thank you. Bringing new life helps us out big time. Yeah, it's like putting the paddles. Pow, pow. No, I was kidding. <laughs> Literally, I felt like invigorated sharing tonight just to hear a different perspective and different voices. It, it makes all the difference. So thank you very much. Yes. Thank you for having us. Yeah. Grateful. Yes. And, and we're going to try to change it up, man, get new people new and, and, and what we're doing this year. So I, I made the schedule and I'm going to post it. That way everybody knows what's going on. But every Sunday we're not doing Wednesdays anymore. We got to keep it simple. Keep it simple. Stupid kiss um, is we're going to do every Sunday, no matter what. Sundays are our deal. We're going to be doing um, topic nights and maybe you might switch it up. We'll have three topic nights every month. Uh, and the last Sunday of the month, we're going to be doing a speaker. We're going to have a sh uh, someone come share their story, and we're going to still going to be on. And we're going to we're going to um, have questions, and we're all going to kind of conversate and and get that hope out there, and keep spreading that message. Um, you know, for for anybody struggling, you know. And if we don't have a speaker, we're not going to be hard on ourselves, and we're just going to do another live. <laughs> and that's all we can do, because you know what? We just do the best we can around here. <laughs> we're not going. That's what counts. <laughs> that's it so guys join us next sunday um right here eight o'clock we'll be going live eastern time if you know some you know somebody's in central uh we go eight o'clock every sunday eastern so thank you guys i love you all have a great week and uh see you next sunday see ya